You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. This is C, P, and Aurora from Nixle, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father, and as always, I bring you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today I have the band Nixle on the show, and they're from Baltimore, Maryland, black metal band. Nixle will release their second album entitled From the Wound Spilled Forth Fire on August 25th via Prosthetic Records. Also check out singles Collapsing the Poles, Enthrall, and Abyss Unto Abyss. And I have on the podcast with me right now, I have C, Aurora, and Key. Welcome to the podcast, everybody, and how you guys doing? Thank you. Thank you. Well. Thanks for having us. Yeah, not a problem whatsoever. How excited are you guys and gals to have the sophomore album entitled From the Wound Spilled Forth Fire, set to release on August 25th via Prosthetic Records? It's unreal. This is something that uh, I can at least personally say I've never had this kind of support with music and I've been doing music for 20 plus years and to have so much enthusiasm already and have that enthusiasm also be coming from someone who has the financial means to support us is incredible. Yeah, it's been pretty surreal. But think about it, Key. 20 some years, I mean, you've been busting your ass for this. I mean, it's got to be a relief that finally the doors are opening and somebody's seen a lot from you guys. I, I think, you know, there there's some element to paying your dues about all this. But at the same time, uh, it's probably better that the world did not hear the bullshit I was up to uh, 20 years ago. Yo, I would second that for myself, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Maybe in the last 10 years, but definitely not 20. Did the album turn out exactly the way you all wanted it to? That is a good question. I think that might be an impossible question. <laughs> I think is there, is there any way to quantify that? What do you what do you think, C and Aurora? I think that given the circumstances, it turned out to be uh, great. And I think we we kind of flow in a way that allows things to happen the way it has to happen. We we had a pretty big time crunch toward the end of the record, um, of the writing process of the record. And so I think if we had had like a bigger budget and more time, there are things that might have been cool to try out. Um, but overall, I'm extremely happy with what what we've put out. I'm always amazed to go back and like listen to the record now that it's you know we are not constantly like thinking about it every five seconds and like how we need to edit it and whatever. And it's crazy to me how it came together. Like, I listened to, like, how the fuck did we do that? How did we come up with that? I don't know. I don't remember the process by which these, like, little nuancey things sort of showed up. And uh, I don't know. It's it's always very synchronous in this band. Everything seems to kind of flow in a really strange, sometimes otherworldly and uh, cool way. So... But do you go back and listen to it as fans, say, versus just as a band? Do you go back and listen to it as a fan and say, yeah, I can hear this, we should have done, or whatever? I mean, do you ever do that possibly, or no, are you just sick of it, be done, and let's just move on? I definitely have almost gotten pulled over speeding because I was listening to the new record. I was like, fucking yes, we did this part. It was so good. I, like, get all revved up and then have to remember <laughs> living in a residential area, I can't fucking get all stoked about our own music i guess that's kind of i don't know silly ego stuff but it feels good yeah i, I would definitely say like i would be a fan of our band if i wasn't the in it i think it's the the best possible document of documenting a band that generally identifies as a live band and so we do our best to capture the, that kind of energy on record that we would have for a live performance and at the end of the day, there's no com there is no comparison to the live set versus the recorded set, and 
we could nitpick and go through it and say, ah, oh, man, if only, but we're, we're talking about reality bending schemes here. Like we can't actually make that happen on vinyl or tape or whatever else. So yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's difficult to listen to any one personal album objectively, but, um, there, yeah, I'm definitely happy with, with the songs. I listened to a few of them very specifically and they, they do what they need to do and express what they need to express for me. And that's saying a lot because what we're attempting to do in this band is ultimately inexpressible. So, yeah. What's your thoughts on signing with Prosthetic Records and what was your reaction that they wanted to sign you guys? Really excited and also very synchronous. Uh, we happen to be on tour through a part of the world where um, one of the folks from Prosthetic happened to be at the time and we just happened to meet up with him and happened to have a really good connection. And um, yeah, I was... I don't know. It, again, with synchronicity, it's it's kind of just been really like, I don't know, magical, like amazing how it ha has worked out. I really respect personally prosthetic a lot. There's a lot, you know, there, there are a lot of my favorite um, active bands are on prosthetic. So it's kind of like surreal and thrilling to be able to share a label with those folks. Um, and there's a lot of a sketchy like edge lordy stuff in black metal so i feel really good to know that there are people who are not going to let that stuff fly that's really cool too so it's been wild and really exciting i would say for me particularly yeah like i said earlier pretty surreal just haven't i haven't ever been i haven't ever worked with a label it's kind of crazy to have been picked up by prosthetic specifically a lot of the time people go have to go through the smaller venues first and um so that's been interesting kind of hard to believe but great we had shopped around the um the first album much in the same way that we shopped around uh from the wounds build birth fire uh with the exception of we did do a three-track demo to um halfway through to just get the word out early and you know, we were committed to the idea of like approaching people both in person and just writing them out of the blue. Like, hey, this is who we are. This is what we got. Do you like it or not? And I think maybe we didn't get any real response beyond um, we're not doing any more records this year for our first record. No indication of if there, if there was any actual interest in the band. And then if I remember the story correctly, Prosthetic wrote back almost immediately, like, oh, yeah, we've heard of you. We'll be talking. We'll be talking. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, it was awesome. And I guess maybe one of their bands um, was coming through Baltimore and had, uh, I guess, requested to play with us. And I don't know who that band was or how they'd, they'd even heard of us, but I think maybe that's how we got into Prosthetic's ears. Do you feel the new album had to come out strong for the band after signing with Prostatic Records or, or no? We had already committed to studio time and we were committed to self-releasing again. Mm -hmm. So I think that although we take everything very seriously, as I hope that is being conveyed, I don't think it was taken more seriously simply because we were working with Prostatic. This is a vehicle for our art and expression and we're like prosthetic or no, we would have been putting our, our best effort and our heart into it as you hear. So. Do you like having that freedom though, to just do your own producing and, and recording, you know, just do it yourself. Do you like having that freedom or would you like to have that producer in there? Maybe possibly. We don't have a producer. I don't know if we would like a producer. Um, and I guess the one thing that we we like about the label support is that we're all a bunch of working stiffs. You know, we can't really afford to put these things out on our own and get the distribution and all that stuff that we want. And we were we were able to successfully self finance the first album, um, but we were deep into our own pockets for a while. 
And you know, this we'd be doing this regardless of anything. We would have self released the second album, and and so on and so forth. But it sort of changes the difference between viewing it as just like the hobby that is necessary so that you can make it through this world uh, versus something where we can actually reach a wider audience and like do more with it. And that's what we're beginning to experience. I think we're also, the five of us are so enmeshed in the process of creating that it would be difficult to have a, a producer throw in more input. <laughs> sort of like too many cooks in the kitchen kind of situation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it, would, it might be interesting, but I also, I, like he said, this is like, that this would have come out one way or the other. It's like, just, we need, we all, I would say we all need it for personal catharsis. And so, yeah, whether or not somebody's there to tell us what to do, <laughs> we're still going to do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, personally, I'm very jealously protective of my art. Um, I, I, I feel like nobody has the right to be putting their hands on it. Um, it would take a very, very specific connection to somebody as a producer for me to trust them to do anything like that. Agreed. How did the band approach the new album when you first started writing on it and getting ideals for it? The story with the new album, I guess, begins with Collapsing the Poles. Yeah. And that, that was a song that we had at least the skeletal uh, framework of at the time where we recorded All Not Sun Tide. Um, but I don't think the song was fully flushed out for another several months um, to the point where it had entertained us to be like, oh, can we like finish this song up and squeeze it onto that album? And I mean, yeah, if, if vinyl records were like 16 inches big or something <laughs> like that, but so that wasn't going to happen for a variety of reasons. Yeah, new album begins with Collapsing the Poles. It was a song that we were able to take the most time with um, and really dial into um, emotion and sensation and intention. I would say that as a band, we have a broader specific intent, which is to be that voice and connection to something bigger. Um, and an expression of our our personal art as each one of us sees it so i don't we didn't really go into it like saying we're gonna have a song like this a song like this we want to express these things musically we kind of always just go into the stu the practice space together and start presenting ideas um and those ideas flow into a song and then a lot of the time uh, the lyrics come with some experience that I'm having and it works exactly with the, the way the song was written. Um, it's always synchronous. It's almost never hard, hard planned out. Part of that synchronicity was also the departure of one of our collaborators and, uh, the addition of Alden, who is, uh, <laughs> He's the man. He is Nixel <laughs> like we are Nixel. Yeah, he's awesome. What, what's Alden brought to the table for this band that might have been missing possibly? Not knocking the other men or anything like that. I'm just asking, what, what's he added to this band that was missing possibly? I want to say, I think it's really, something I really appreciate about playing in this band is that everybody has a really unique set of influences from previous experience. I mean, we've all been playing music, like he said, for 20-some years, more probably for some of us. Um and we all have different influences in the way we play and the music we like to listen to. Um, and Alden came from, I mean, there's overlap with all of us, but he also brings a really unique, like kind of prog heavy, mellow death kind of stuff. And then also, I mean, he just has a really unique, like approach to music that our previous uh, guitar player didn't have as much. Um, but I mean, it, that dude's kind of irrelevant. Like Alden's just, I don't know. He has a unique way of looking at time signatures and like the writing process and melodies. And it was something that really, I feel like tied together the different perspectives that each of us brought on our own in a way that was really cool. Um, 
yeah. How's the feedback been on the releases of these new singles? What have you guys been seeing that's impressed you all the most from seeing the feedback? For me, it's been uh, the places that it's been coming from. Like, we, there's a rad magazine out of Sweden that was apparently really moved by the album. Um, like, being able to communicate with folks from all over the world or people that we would otherwise have no connections with um, and getting positive feedback. And, like, I always think it's really interesting to hear what, individuals here in music you know like instead of just hearing like oh yeah your song slaps or whatever like to actually hear people talk about you know like <laughs> the individual little nuances that they think are interesting um that's always really been fun to to hear uh but yeah i would say i'm probably the most impacted by like the the range of humans from around the fucking globe who are like <laughs> into what we're doing that's it feels really amazing yeah, the, the praise and the community and all that vastly outshadows any negative uh, attention um, that we've had. And as far as I can tell, the negative attention is usually coming from people who are either um, will come out of the gate saying, oh, I only listen to music that's got 20 second songs. So I hate this. Okay. <laughs> that's that's fine this is absolutely not for you bro like yeah, for real. I, hope you yeah. <laughs> I think any anyone willing to give it a listen has given us like neutral if not emphatic emphatic um praise for it i've always told people man if it's not your cup of tea fuck it move on don't say nothing just don't First like it just move you. on yeah, Grow the fuck this up. world is based on trolls now <laughs> yeah yeah everybody <laughs> has an opinion and that that's cool but just you don't like to listen to it just fuck off and go right <laughs> you don't like my podcast don't fucking listen to it don't, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. And i mean <laughs> at the end of the day we're writing black metal like this is not for everybody it's not yeah. supposed to be it was never supposed to be and although we don't come at it from trying to be exclusive we recognize that we are attempting to make the harshest sounds and the like i don't know whatever we can do to exercise our own like troubles and that's not going to hit everybody the same way. I get it. So let me ask you this though. Did, did you guys add anything differently on this album musically than what people are accustomed to hearing from Nixel? There's more, there are three part harmonies in this album. <laughs> harmonies. Harmonies is not the right word. There are, there are three vocalists on this album. That's oh, different no. than the last one. No harmonies, just screaming just for the record <laughs> um because alden and shane are both very prolific guitar players i feel like there's more um like dueling lead type stuff on this record than there was in the last one it's more I, aggressive i would say i mean at least on one song there's an overt ritual aspect to it the last album had had um magical and spiritual meaning throughout the whole thing um this one is more direct i suppose in that sense i think it's also a reflection of where we are at as creators too you know i can remember the first couple practices and i've never been so fucking exhausted in my entire life <laughs> and now we're able to bang those songs out and and then some like night after night on tour it's like it's it's meant to be as physically challenging as well as like emotionally immensely challenging as it can be otherwise it's not you know, you're not going to reach that cathartic point. Yeah, if you can't stand by your music and believe in it and it's pouring out of you on stage, then why the fuck even do it? Truth. I'm preaching. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> 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 what led the track Collapsing the Poles to be the first song released off the sound? What was it about that song that you guys said, yeah, that needs to go out first? Like he said, it was the first one that we wrote for this record. So that maybe it was just kind of like in our heads that way it really kind of introduces the overall philosophical there are two songs that that really focus on the philosophical perspective of the album and that's collapsing the poles and then the self or the the album titled song um so i it felt good to have that at the beginning to kind of just introduce introduce the overall concept um it's also like there's a couple songs that are very much more the traditional black metal like straightforward relentless style and uh we really wanted 
we don't want to start like right out the gate with that. We wanted to have have to be able to showcase more of of our like um, more experimental side, you know. I think that song really lends itself toward um, visuals, and I think that's what really led us down the pathway that we did for the music video associated with it. We were able to like take the intent and take the content of the lyrics uh, and form an actual story, like basically a little miniature movie. Like there's no cuts to us playing in that music video, and that was very intentional. Um, we very much wanted, to, yeah, just like a little story to to go along with it, and I think that was what we wanted to lead with. That's what I love about music videos. When music videos was great back in the day, when MTV actually played shit, you know, yeah. it, it was about that video. I mean, I love the songs. Don't get me wrong, but that video is what captured me. Like when you watch Guns N' Roses, Lies, or I Welcome to the Jungle, or Metallica's, uh, I don't know. Everywhere I may roam, stuff like that, or some Slayer or something like that. Man, those videos were like, oh, can't wait to watch this video again. Absolutely. Even, even though it was old school 80s stuff, like, man, for Cinderella and stuff like that, it was so cool to watch. And it's like, man, <laughs> this is good shit. And now it's just like, eh, it's like it's went away. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not the most sought after format anymore. Nope. It's a single and put out on Spotify and done. That's it. Yep. I mean, I won't, I won't lie to you. Like, I think that a lot of our videos come to fruition because we are exceedingly lucky that a lot of our art comes from in-house. And our guitar, one of our guitar players, Shane, is the mastermind behind all of our videos and all of our photography. So having him be able to translate our visions as we collaborate is absolutely like the degree that allows us to do this in the first place. And I don't, I don't blame any other band for being like, our cre our main creative output is music. We're not out here to be musicians and theater people and whatever the fuck else. Like, I get that. That's a tall order. And not, <laughs> not that we are either, but we're giving it our best go, and we happen to have a, an excellent amount of resources in house. Was there a track for the album that totally ended up sounding different than what it was intended to when it's first brought to the table? Was there one that kept changing or no? From the Wound definitely changed a lot. Uh, did anything else change a lot? I feel... I think that's probably the one that's changed the most. The whole back half of it changed pretty dramatically. Uh, I wouldn't say uh, Way of the Grave changed. Uh, it it kind of just unfolded before us, but at the same time, it it's very different from the rest of the tracks, and yet it is the completing piece to the album the album would be absolutely incomplete without it any tracks standing out more to you than any right now on this album i understand these are your guys babies i understand it completely <laughs> but are they are there any that stand up for the each of you possibly yeah um i mean i think it's natural to have favorites and ones that you know that don't speak to you as much it's your art but you can have opinions too what's um, your favorite I think my favorite songs are uh, The Door Never Closed and um, and The Way Is The Grave. Those are, I, I really enjoy the spirit and meaning behind those songs and I enjoy the, uh, the ability to experiment and um, do things that you don't really hear a lot of other black metal bands doing. So, yeah, I think that happens a lot in both those songs. Uh, it, it legit changes all the time, but I'll tell you right now. Um, and, you know, it's different to say what song I like to listen to versus what song I, I like to play, whether live or even at rehearsal. But I'm going to go with From the Wound Spilled, for, Spilled Forth Fire just because I think that, um, to me, it's not just like the, the physically challenging aspect that I mentioned before, um, but I just feel like even without a music video and, you know, maybe we'll get around to it one day. Like, I think it tells a story in just the way that we change the feel so frequently, but I like to think that we're changing it at least in a way that's relatable to the listener. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah. 
is there any songs that didn't make this album we could see on another album ep or just maybe a standalone single down the road we are working on a thing but we can't talk about it yet <laughs> <laughs> little teaser little teaser <laughs> yeah might have another one that i haven't even told any of my other bandmates about yet oh oh, oh shit <laughs> uh oh just dropped right here folks Got a, lot of a lot of secret covers in the works Ooh, I hope House of the Rising Sun is one of them by the animals. Oh, wow, that'd be interesting, actually. Because uh, I challenge anybody to do the freaking organ uh, solo with either organ or guitar. I want it done. Right. Interesting. That's an interesting idea. I've always wanted to cover Thank Jethro Tull song. Jethro Tull? Yeah. Oh. But... Oh, he says no. <laughs> Shit. All right. No. <laughs> No, Metallica, they, they kick Metallica out of winning an award when you're not like, fuck you, Jethro uh, Tull, okay. fuck you. <laughs> I appreciate no, you. <laughs> you like them, you like them. That's no big deal. <laughs> so is the track listing placement important for your albums or EP releases at all, guys? Without question, everything that we do, and like I know this is going to sound a little bit pretentious, but bear with me, Like, there's intent behind it all. Sure. Like, it doesn't mean that it's going to land for everybody, but like we are here orchestrating like how we can make what we're doing the absolute best, at least for our own ears, if no one else is receptive to it. But yeah, we hemmed and hawed on that order for a little bit. It's not, a, the album itself is not a concept album in that it from start to finish tells a specific story, but all the songs flow in and out of one another in a way that's that um, is very important. I, th I think that it sounds like a complete piece and I would rather listen to it song to song than like pull singles. I don't really listen to albums that way anyway, but yeah. What's the growth musically you've seen from yourselves working on this album that impresses you all the most, if anything, as a band? Is there anything that came out during this album like, whoa, we're on the right path, we're finally hitting our stride? Possibly. I feel like our writing process has become, I don't, seamless is a silly word, but like we, it just, it's when we first started writing with Alden, I mean, he, it worked pretty quickly right away, but I feel like, you know, we we're all still kind of feeling each other out, whatever, and now, the last two songs for the album came together literally just like <laughs> unfolded before us um not to say that it wasn't hard and you know there's always like tricky pieces but i feel like we have become so cohesive as a group of individuals in like our writing process i feel like this album really worked and we also i don't know like we all kind of everybody is say i i'm always really amazed by my bandmates skill at playing and like i feel pushed to get better all the time and i feel like if i look at how i play now versus how i first how i was playing when i first started playing with nixel or in my previous bands like i can tremolo pick like really fast now and i couldn't used to do that before <laughs> you know like i mean i was never really i, I don't know, whatever like yeah i feel like our individual skill level has been pushed up and the way we write together has has improved our live shows have always been really amazingly connected um but i feel like even more so now it's like something else takes over and we all just become this like weird writhing organism for a half hour um i feel like that this music's definitely kind of pushed that along too i think that uh what i appreciate most about this album as i said before is the the space and ability to to keep experimenting with it i kind of hope i think that that expansion and evolution are the most important things in art and in life in general and i don't i kind of hope we never hit our stride in the sense that we just find a sound and stay with it you know yeah, yeah. um i i don't want to go off the deep end like many bands do but i also don't ever want to be just writing the same shit over and over again um so that I think that on this album, as compared to the last album, you can hear a genuine evolution in the music. Um, and I hope that con that it will continue to move forward in that direction. Now, this album was recorded live, correct? Correct. 
So are we going to get some more live recordings like this? I mean, do you like having the album recorded live as, you know, with the band or how do y'all want to go from here on out? I would like to say we will always record live. Like he said earlier, we are first and foremost a live band. I mean, that happens to be that we make recordings and it's a fun process. We have, you know, got to work with some really amazing folks on that, but also um, the energy that is present in a live show is so important and I feel like it's not conveyed if we were to be doing single tracking stuff. So yeah, I think probably everything we do will be live, hopefully. I yeah, I mean, I, everything that you said, um, the the conveyance of, of the energy, the interactive energy of the, the musicians is so important and you can lose that when you're just doing track by track recording. Um, it's also tracking gives people the opportunity to like nitpick and get into this situation where you can like cut little things out and change it. And the whole point is to like, if there's like a small flub or fuck up that actually sometimes you, that makes part of the song, you know, um, and you, you lose that if you sit down and dissect too much. Um, so I think it's important for us to, to record live for that as well. We had some perfectionist moments. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now I want to get to know Aurora C and key specifically just you three. Okay. We're going to throw Nixo out the window. If you could write an album equivalent to your band, to your favorite band's album, what album would that be possible? If you could say, man, if I could write an album like Slayers, I don't know, whatever, I want to write that type of album. Wow. That's this an is, incredible question. <laughs> yeah. Th this is my heat seater right here. This is the one that gets yeah. everybody. Because <laughs> I know there's got to be one where you guys got to say, Fuck, man, I wish I wrote this, I don't know, uh, Queen album. I wish I could write something like that, maybe. Yeah. See, he's like looking away like, fuck this. Oh, I got to find something. <laughs> Let me, uh... <laughs> I mean, I, I, I always want to push our music to be doing something that is simultaneously familiar and unfamiliar. Yeah. Um, I want people to recognize this as metal, first and foremost, and as black metal. But at the same time, I don't want to be caught in those trappings. Um, so more to your question, you know, if I just so happen to be in, say, a killing joke at the time of our first self-titled release, I'd be pretty happy with what we just did. You know, like they were doing something that was an amalgamation of so many different uh, subcultures of music at the time. And they had such an enormous transformation throughout their career. I mean, I saw them on their 40th anniversary tour a couple of years back. Um, but that first album just encapsulated so much like rawness with like elements of like sort of electronic music that was in, in goth, yet it was punk and I don't know, it was just overall a rebellious record. And it just, to me, encapsulated rebellion beyond any sort of genre of music yeah i feel like the music bands artists whatever who have had the biggest influence on me are like are that to people who sit at the crossroads um like i i i'm very sad to say how much i love neurosis because of the news that came out about them in the last couple of years but that that they have been such a tremendous influence on on me and such a like saving grace in my life for so many ways um and they they do that you know there's like they created an entire genre of metal you know they did that themselves they started as hardcore band and then they threw in all these other things and now they yeah their music is is its own and i feel like that's something i i hope that we are kind of pushing for ourselves also to kind of mirror what he was saying and also, I mean, also, like, I think about, like, Lydia Lunch and Teenage Jesus and the Jerks and the No Wave movement, like, that stuff, I feel like, is really also influential to me. Because it, it also is, like, abrasive as fuck. And, like, it's just 
they're just creating. Oh, and Genesis Peorage and like Psychic TV, my old band got to tour with them. And that she was such an incredible genius and visionary and like just fucking the boundaries like all around to create music that was cathartic for her. Um, you know, and that's, that's a really important piece for me. And I, yeah, I would say I can't pick one fucking album because there's so many good albums. Yeah. This is a great question though. Yeah. It's uh, difficult. yeah. But the, it, all that, the folks who sit at the crossroads are definitely like the, those records are the most important, I would say. Um, I'm, I'm totally drawing a blank. Like <laughs> there's, I tend not to pick favorites of things in the first place because there's just so much, like there's so much shit in the world, but there's almost so much good, good music happening. It just like, uh, it has to pop up and it has to be what you're, what you need at the time. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's it's all that the whole point of nixel the whole point of any music that i have ever made is to attempt to push boundaries um whether or not i accomplished that at every chance you know who knows but but that has always been the point and all the bands that i love are the ones that push boundaries or did at the time you know some of them have dropped into a place of comfort but at like early dark funeral is amazing you know um and their their newer stuff is good too but it's just dark funeral and uh like bands like like sun black one is an amazing record to me um but that is also the first the first time i was ever exposed to music being active magic going to see them live and having them uh, totally change the atmosphere of the space, including like the physical atmosphere where you can see like cups moving around on the table and stuff like that, you know, like, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, if I keep going, I'm just going to drone on and on about <laughs> this. Uh, so yeah no man man you had me at the, the cups moving on a table because i'm a paranormal guy i love that yeah. shit oh, yeah. but All think right. about this see you know you you talked about influences for you and things like that and and now you're doing your own thing you, you followed bands that didn't make you feel like you was an outcast or they made you feel like you belong and now you guys are doing the same thing for these folks True. you know what what what's it mean to you now being on that hot seat and somebody comes up to you and says hey man i i love your fucking music I love exactly what you guys are doing in your in your breath of fresh air to us. That's the point of this for us. Not to make music that is for everybody or really anybody, but if a person can can experience the energy that we're putting out and appreciate it, then it's for them. And uh, and I have really appreciated getting the amazing feedback. I think every show we play, somebody comes up and tells us they had a spiritual experience, which is the point of the music. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're not for everybody and I don't want to be for everybody, but I very much appreciate that, that there are people that we can move. To the best of our ability, we intend to, be as accessible to those people uh, as long as we can. Because uh, we were and we are those people even in this day. And when when those people come up to us and say, this is the first metal show I've ever been to and you blew my mind. Usually my response is like, oh, well, wait for the fucking headliner. They're going to fucking blow your mind. <laughs> but the fact that people feel that ability to come up come right up to us and and speak with us i never want to change that boundary even if they want to be like you guys suck and be like well your attitude sucks take a walk yep i remember last year we opened maryland death fest um there was a young person who came up to after we played and they were like i don't know they i 
I can't imagine that was an all ages show, but they seemed very young to me. And they were with their parent. They had come flown there from somewhere else. And they were like, I've never seen somebody like who looks like me up on a stage playing music and screaming and stuff like that's so cool. And I'm going to go home and learn how to play bass now. And I'm like, fucking yeah, like <laughs> you know, visibility is important. I think I'm glad that folks are, can like resonate with that and also yeah just everything that that these folks have said already we don't have to be for everybody but um yeah that that energy exchange is really important it feels yeah. amazing come talk to us if you see us oh yeah folks nixa will release their second album entitled from the wound spilled from fourth fire on august 25th via prostate records if you want to get out and pick this album up plus picked up their older album as well how can folks stay in touch with Nixel, you all, and, and buy this merchandise that you have out to support you all? And plus this album, everything under the name of Nixel, how can they do that? We have a Bandcamp page, which is uh, nixel.bandcamp.com. We are on Instagram and Facebook as Nixel Nothing, at, at Nixel Nothing. And we are, I think we are on TikTok now, apparently, and uh, <laughs> Twitter or X or whatever that thing's called. We're all navigating the world of social media in a really awkward and hilarious way. So come laugh at us on the internet. Very yeah. importantly, if not most importantly, we're also going to be on the road pretty soon. Yes. Uh, we're going to be in Rochester. We're going to be in, when is that? August 24th. Next Thursday. Yeah. Yep. Uh, followed by Rahway, New Jersey. Next day. Okay. And then... Uh, find us on Instagram to get the dates and places right. Um, but we're going to be doing nine days in uh, September into early October. So please come out. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great stuff coming up. You only hear these interviews right here. Nowhere else. Right fucking here. I'm Bods by Him Hour. Get out and check out our Facebook page. as our podcast link and our YouTube link. And you definitely want to subscribe to that YouTube link if you like what I'm doing. And I hope you guys and gals do because I love doing this for you all. Please go out and check out Nixel. They're going to release their new album title from The Wound Spilled Fourth Fire on August 25th via Prostate Records. Give this band a fair shot. And, hey, you guys have total support for me, and I wish you all nothing but the best of luck, honestly. Thank all you. right. Thank Great you, man. Time. Appreciate you. You're listening to Bud's Mayhem Hour. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.